Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Aisha Ibrahim. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa ratified and issued Law 11 of 2022, ratifying the status of Arab in uh, Federation for Nature Reserves after the approval of the Shura and Representatives Council. The law stipulates that the status of the Arab Union for Nature Reserves was ratified, which was approved by the Council of the Arab League at the ministerial level by virtue of Resolution 7490 DP 137 issued in Cairo on March 10, 2012, corresponding to this law with the following reservation. Bahrain does not consider itself bound by the provisions of paragraph 5 of Article 4 of the primary law. His Majesty the King also ratified and issued Law 12 of 2022, approving the accession of Bahrain to the agreement on immunities and privileges of the Organization of the Islamic Cooperation after the approval of the Shura and Representatives Councils. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, commissioned the impedient uh, launch of a development plan for mosques across the kingdom's governorates. His Royal Highness instructed that 20 mosques belonging to the Sunni and Jafari endowments be inaugurated and restored, located across different governorates of the kingdom. He also directed the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments in coordination with the concerned authorities to allocate sites and expedite design and construction of 12 mosques in Salman City. His Royal Highness directed to provide the necessary budget for the development plan and for the adoption of modern standards and Islamic designs in building and developing the mosques. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, yesterday chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Gulaybiya Palace. The cabinet noted the importance of continued cooperation and coordination between the executive and legislative authorities to further the progress and development of the kingdom for the benefits of its citizens. The cabinet expressed its appreciation for the role played by the Shura and Representatives Councils and their active contribution to the advancement and development of the kingdom. The cabinet reviewed positive outcomes achieved in ensuring the availability of basic commodities through measures taken in response to market shifts in light of global developments that are affecting energy supplies and the availability and prices of goods. In this regard, the cabinet thanked the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism for its efforts and noted the importance of continuing to monitor market prices and the availability of goods. The cabinet welcomed the declaration by the president of Yemen, Abd Rabbu Mansour Hadi, on the establishment of a presidential council to whom he has transferred presidential authority, thus completing the implementation of the transitional phase in accordance with the constitution, the GCC initiative and its executive mechanism. The cabinet affirmed the Kingdom of Bahrain's support for the Yemeni Presidential Council in managing the country's affairs through a transitional period and in meeting the aspirations of the Yemeni people for security, stability and development. The cabinet then reviewed the following topics. A memorandum by the Government Executive Committee on a brief regarding the performance of government agencies in Sijilat, Tawasal and Binayat systems during the first quarter of 2022. And a memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance regarding progress on implementing the Kingdom's Economic Recovery Plan, which confirms by its the end of this first quarter of 2022, 16 of the 27 initiatives under the plan's five priorities have been implemented. The Cabinet then approved the following memorandums. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a draft law ratifying an agreement on the linking payment system between the GCC countries. The move aims to enhance cross-border safety and efficiency. 
A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an MOU between the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs and the Pearl Initiative, which aims to educate and train young entrepreneurs on commercial and corporate governance, best practices, and to support them through the provision of mentorship and commercial development programs. A memorandum by the Minister of Foreign Affairs on the legal regulation of honorary consuls abroad who are accredited to the Kingdom of Bahrain. And a memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's response to four proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet took note of several ministerial reports regarding the outcomes of a visit to the Russian Federation and participation in the Gavi Kovic uh, Advanced Market Commitment Summit 2022. The chairman of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club High Committee, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired a meeting of the REHC High Committee. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman highlighted that due to the royal directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and through the guidance of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the kingdom has successfully attained many achievements in the horse racing sector. His Highness offered his best wishes on the occasion of the holy month of Ramadan to His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and to Bahraini citizens. His Highness outlined the Kingdom's commitment to develop the horse racing sector, stating that a number of programs and strategies have been implemented to attract investments and retain a talent in the industry. During the meeting, the success of the 2021 to 2022 horse racing season was reviewed. Local and international races hosted included the King's Cup, the Crown Princess Cup, the third edition of the Bahrain International Trophy and the first edition of the Bahrain Turf Series. His Highness commended the efforts of the REHC administrative and technical staff and extended his gratitude for the support of the sponsors and partners during the season. The meeting reviewed a number of agenda items, including proposals for development of the club's infrastructure, which would support training efforts. The meeting also reviewed a number of urban plans for the REHC Club, the 2022 to 2023 calendar of activities and preparations for the upcoming season. The Supreme Council for Judicial re revealed the latest court statistics in March 2022 as the number of ongoing cases in all courts reached 9,947. Cassation Court President and Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Judicial Council, Chancellor Abdullah bin Hassan al buinin said that, he is, uh, that this is a great achievement and recorded for the first time in the number of ongoing lawsuits in all levels of courts and indicated that the Council follows up on a monthly basis the performance indicators. He stressed that the adoption of a measuring that performance indicators of courts contributes to revealing the judicial reality and evaluating each stage, as well as the extent of its progress in the judicial procedures to improve judicial performance. He added that the new statistics is a measure of the progress of the Supreme Judicial Council and its keenness to achieve the development initiative goals in judicial work and the aspirations of Bahrain Economic Vision 2030. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs held its regular session remotely, presided over by its chairman, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa. The council expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for receiving them on the occasion of the holy month of Ramadan. They expressed pride in the meeting and uh, meeting His Majesty and appreciation in the Council's role in serving Islam and spreading its teachings. The Council re renewed its congratulations and blessings on the occasion of the holy month of Ramadan. <coughs> commended the support of His Majesty the King of Bahraini Youth, hailing the designation of the current year as the Year of Bahraini Youth. It also commended the efforts led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in combating the COVID-19 pandemic, which restored the Holy Month's vital activities. 
The meeting praised the orders of His Royal Highness to launch a development plan for mosques in all governorates, stressing that these directives reflect the government's keenness to support and take care of mosques. The meeting also welcomed the opening of a number of mosques in conjunction with the holy month of Ramadan. The Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, affirmed that the ministry has started selecting a team to coordinate with the concerned authorities to allocate size and take measures to ensure the start of designing and building 12 mosques in Salman City, upon the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The minister praised the order of His Royal Highness to launch a development plan for mosques in all governorates and noted the support and follow-up of His Royal Highness in preparing mosques and providing comfort, safety and reassurance. The Minister of Labor and Social Development, Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Labor Market Regulatory Authority, LMRA, Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Hamedan, chaired the fifth meeting of the LMRA Board of Directors. Hamedan stressed that the launch of the voluntary insurance system for domestic workers contributes to ensuring the protect and protecting the rights of employers and domestic workers, as well as providing protection for all policies, noting the positive results achieved since the implementation of this mechanism. The meeting reviewed the authority's most prominent achievements over the past year and its initiatives in light of the keenness to implement all government decisions and organizational projects according to the specified timetable. The minister noted the efforts made to monitor the activity of domestic labor recruitment offices to ensure their compliance with laws and regulatory decisions. In light of the strategic objectives of the National Space Science Agency and SSA with regard to building national capabilities, advancing space science at the national level and promoting innovative and development in line with the Kingdom's Economic Vision 2030, NSSA organized a workshop in cooperation with international companies specialized in the field of space to introduce the initiative of experiment in space. To speak more about the workshop, we are joined by Orbital Space Partner and Director of Educational Programs and Outreach, Neda Eshimri. At Orbital Space, our vision is to make space accessible to all, and that's why we create opportunities for educational space missions, and one of these opportunities is Experiment in Space. This is one of the special space missions we run for students where they get to engage with and manage real-world space research. What's wonderful about EIS is that it provides hands-on learning opportunity where students get to work on their own space mission, develop their critical thinking and leadership skills, and of course, their skills in the use of the scientific method. Students get to experience what scientists go through in preparing for our real world space missions because that's what they'll be doing. And of course, we will support and guide them the whole way to send their experiment to the International Space Station. Students can choose to run experiments to study the effects of weightlessness, i.e. microgravity, on various subjects such as liquids and other materials. On the International Space Station, an astronaut will run their experiment in microgravity on their behalf and the students will themselves perform the same experiment back here on Earth so that they can compare the results and come up with a conclusion from their observations.